What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're gonna be going over my top five gaming headsets of 2020, plus a few honorable mentions, so you can see which I think are the best of the best that came out this year. For each one, we'll go over them in detail, talk about all the stuff you're gonna wanna know, but I'll do the mic tests at the end. So instead of, you know, breaking them up into their own section, we're gonna have them all back to back to back so you can hear the direct comparison, so you can really hear the mic quality and how they sound in comparison to each other. And also, we did our top five gaming keyboards video, our top five gaming mice of 2020. So if you wanna check those out, definitely do. Today's top five headsets completes the trifecta of the best gaming peripherals of 2020. All the links we listed for you in the description down below. And starting us off today at number five is a really good budget option from Cooler Master. These really surprised me. They're the MH630 and they come in at just $60, which is a fantastic deal. Really, really impressed with these. So for the design overall, they're very simple, primarily plastic and stuff for the construction, but they are lightweight in return, but it also doesn't feel flimsy at all. You do have that purple accent ring around the ear cup, so take it or leave it. They feature 50 millimeter neodymium drivers, and the ear cups themselves are a mesh, but they're nice and thick, provide great padding and a great seal on your ear overall. Both the microphone and the cable on this headset is removable, which is really nice to see. You have built-in volume control, plus a mic mute button on the back of the left ear cup. And the gooseneck mic sounds really, really good. Like I said, you'll hear that sound test at the end. Ear cups also rotate 90 degrees for a better fit on your head. And like I said, with these really thick cushioned ear pads and the overall plastic construction, lightweight, feels really nice. And what really surprised me about these, besides the great microphone quality, is the neutral sound signature overall. It's not trying to do too much. It's not trying to push the bass to the fact where it gets over muddy. Bass is nice and tight and punchy. Great audio and spatial awareness overall. I was just really impressed with the sound with these. And like I said, for just $60, Cooler Master is doing some great stuff in the audio space. And for $20 more, they do have a version that has RGB lighting around the ear cup instead of just the stock purple and it's USB. Uh, this plugs to your PC with the just the standard mic jack and audio jack and stuff. But I mean, you shouldn't want to be paying an extra 20 bucks just for an RGB light ring around the ear cup. I think all things considered, like I said, 60 bucks, fantastic value. Definitely need to be on my top five for sure. Next up is the headset we reviewed probably a little over a month ago at this point, and that's the brand new HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. You're probably familiar with these from the original Cloud 2, one of the top selling headsets of all time. Now, a few years later, we get the wireless version and they do not disappoint whatsoever. Design-wise, it's practically the same as their Cloud series, so it looks pretty much the same. All black with the red accents on the ear cup and the yoke. Stitching in the headband looks really nice. They feature 53 millimeter drivers that are specially tuned. And I don't know what, how they do it, but they always just sound super clear. These are very good sounding drivers. They have a little bass port up top so it doesn't get overly muddy and stuff. It gives you a nice solid punch. Ear pads as well are memory foam and they're premium leatherette from HyperX. So nice and cushiony for sure. You have your power button and mic mute button on the back of the left ear cup with the USB-C port for charging and the volume dial on the right ear cup. The mic itself, also removable. But again, since these are wireless, one of the things I was concerned about was if there was gonna be a noticeable downgrade in sound quality. And no, none whatsoever. They still managed to make these sound absolutely incredible. With those 53 millimeter drivers, the sound stage is just so expansive, but everything still feels controlled, for example. Um, but the one area I did mention in my review was that the, like the high ends is a bit harsh in some instances, mainly with music, and I wish they had the ability to be EQ'd in their software, uh, but unfortunately they don't. But besides that, they sound very, very good. Now, ironically, one of the trade-offs and sort of compliments to having the uh, higher end frequencies kind of increased a bit, and even in some of the mids, is the fact that your ambience and the, the world around you uh, does sound a bit more sparkly. So for example, I was able to hear birds in certain spots in Battlefield um, where I didn't usually you know, hear them. I just wasn't really paying attention to that. Or I can hear a tank sort of like cranking in the distance, sound like the, like the rocks are getting caught up in it. Battlefield has a great, great sound design overall. And uh, that's one area where, yeah, it might be a bit too sparkly, but it makes it sound really lively. Battery life on these also very good at 30 hours. 
And they're super flexible but durable with the all aluminum frame to here. And yes, yeah, just gives you a great clamp overall. And the weight distribution on this is uh, just unrivaled, I think. They did a really good job with their wireless variant this year. And it comes in at $150. Next up is gonna be the newer version of kind of a similar sentiment to this last one. Uh, last year we had the G Pro X headset from Logitech. Now we get the G Pro X Lightspeed, which is their wireless version. And we're gonna toss it to Dimitri from Hardware Canucks because these are his favorite of 2020. Well, hello, good people, I'm Dimitri. Thanks to Frank for the invitation. My current favorite headset for the year would be the Logitech G Pro X wireless. I chose this as my favorite headset because I spend a lot of time in VR after work, doing workouts with box VR. I'm still playing Alex too. And this headset size-wise expands beautifully to still go around the Rift S headset, yet still create a nice seal. So I'm totally consumed in my VR environment. Battery life is good, up to 20 hours, and I can monitor that in the software. I never use the microphone, but the Blue Voice functionality is there if you want to use it. It is charging with a Type-C connection, which is great. There's plenty of volume and the reason, another reason why I chose this over the new HyperX wireless is because of the sound quality. I actually prefer the sound quality on the G Pro X plus a lot of the customization you get with EQ uh, in the G Hub, even though I never touched them, but some people care about that. So that is why the G Pro X wireless headset is my currently favorite recommendation for 2020 if you're looking for wireless. So as you heard, they were his favorite of the year, coming at number three on my list, but I mean, everything he said is spot on. They sound so, so good. They're another company who can manage to replicate that same pretty much lossless audio quality versus their you know original wired headset to now wireless, uh, feel really comfortable. And in terms of, you know like I said, uh, clamping pressure I mentioned in previous of the headsets and stuff, this one probably has the best out of all that. It is a little bit on the heavier side due to the materials, uh, but clamping wise, it feels really, really good. And it's just, they're doing some great, great stuff from Logitech and again, mic quality, all that stuff. Uh, you'll hear that towards the end when I do them all back to back. Then we'll go over our final notes on that. Uh, but yes, G Pro X, great, great stuff with their wireless version here from Logitech. Coming in at number two, this one is pretty special. And we're gonna toss it to Brian from Bad C Tech to mention this real quick. Yo, what's good everybody? I'm Brian P from Bad Seed Tech. Frank asked me to come by today and talk a little about my favorite gaming headset from 2020. I know this one ranked really high for him as well. This is the PC38X from Drop and Sennheiser. If you can get past the yellow, what you find is a really solid combination of the older Sennheiser frame and the drivers from the newer GSP500. So you end up with an open back gaming headset that allows you to hear a bit of the world around you that's got great clarity and soundstage, but still delivers the bass. That's pretty rare for an open back headphone. It's not muddy or overblown either. They sound really good. Not only that, but they've lowered the impedance to 28 ohms, so you don't even need an amp. You can drive these with just about anything you can plug a headphone into, so your console controller or your Nintendo Switch will handle these great. They include two different cables inside the box, so you can hook these up to whatever you want to without having to find a splitter or an adapter. They take about two weeks to fully break in. After that, they become super comfortable. They have really minimal clamping force and plenty of padding where you need it. They've got these big oval ear pads and like a sport mesh. They also include a set of allure pads as well. These are really easy to swap out so you can experiment around and see which one sounds best for you. The mic you've been listening to this entire time is permanently attached. It works with a swivel, up for mute, down for live. There's no software of any sort, just a simple volume wheel on the right side. While you may not be a fan of this boom style mic, it sounds better than most for a gaming headset and because it's always attached, it makes it easy to reach for for stuff like Zoom meetings, distance learning, and these sound so good, you'll probably find yourself gravitating towards them for music listening as well. Needless to say, they also perform great for gaming, with enough bass to get you like amped up and immersed in the moment, but not so much that it's drowning out the important details that you need to hear. In terms of detail and imaging, i.e. knowing exactly where your enemy is coming from, these sound dangerously close to drop in Sennheiser's own HD 58X, which you've probably heard about. About the only real performance downside I can think of is that the open back nature of these means you can hear the world around you and other people can hear what you're listening to as well, so it doesn't make these an ideal choice for mobile use. All in all, even at a price point of $169.99, they did a really nice job with these, and they're an easy recommend for me, particularly for console players. Big thanks to Frank for having me on today. Feel free to stop by the channel if you want to know more. Hope everybody has a safe and happy holiday, and until next time, stay up.
So I think Brian pretty much hit the nail on the head in every aspect of this headset. The PC38X is one of my favorites, obviously coming in at number two. And in the gaming headset space, there is such a lack of open back. And I have always loved it because you, it's just more immersive, I think. It makes you feel like you're in the middle of the battlefield, in the middle of the action, versus just having you know a driver on each ear blasting the audio into your head. So they sound so good. They nailed everything about this headset. Uh, maybe just besides the yellow accents, but again, whatever. Um, and also, again, as you're gonna hear, probably the best microphone. So very, very impressed with these. Uh, really cannot give them a glowing recommendation enough. And honestly, between number three, number two, and number one, I had a very hard time uh, pretty much pinpointing which one I was gonna give that top spot to in the ultimate three, two, one ranking. But for me, I think it comes down for number one, my top headset of 2020 is the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro. And to throw a wrench into things, I'm even gonna share this top spot with their V2X, okay? Because the V2X at just $60 was one of my favorites of the entire year. And I actually contemplated putting that between number one and two. But then last month or month or two ago, whatever, when they released the wireless version of the V2, which is now the V2 Pro, they both absolutely blew my mind. So first off, I think when it comes to overall value, uh, the V2X at 60, is one of the greatest deals in just the headset market to date. It's phenomenal. The V2 Pro does get a price jump to 180, which is definitely a bit pricey, yes. But they're just doing something so different than what they've done in the past from their Kraken lineup. The audio in these, I really think is unrivaled. Not only can you EQ these in their software, but you can take advantage of their Razer 7.1 surround sound, which I think is the best emulated surround sound out of any company. They do surround sound right. And also their certified THX sound. Both feature their Triforce Titanium 50 millimeter drivers. The driver construction into the headset is broken up into three different parts, hence the name Triforce, which individually tunes the highs, mids, and lows. And for the V2 Pro, the bass really surprised me. And I think altogether at how well it could handle um, some extreme EQing in their software. So for example, when I bump the bass and the treble up even more, it doesn't get overblown. It doesn't sound worse. It's all very controlled in a sense where it's not making it sound worse at the extreme scenarios. And for the more in-depth breakdown of the actual sound quality, you know, I did an actual review on the V2X and V2 headset when these came out but they sound really, really good. Footsteps, directional audio, I think is just perfect in these. And again, with the V2 Pro being the wireless version of the budget option of the V2X, but their hyperspeed technology also causes zero frequency, distortion, background noise, nothing to the wireless headset. And it's also decent at battery, lasting 24 hours on a single charge. For the design, I love the nod to the old pilot headset look. Um, if you remember the original Black Shark, these were pretty similar to that, but it had more of a mechanical look. And in my actual review of the V2X, I stated that they were the most comfortable headset I've tried. And I, that still remains the same. Something about them altogether, they are the most comfortable gaming headset I've ever used. And it's the same for the V2 Pro. So they nailed design, they nailed construction, they nailed how it feels on your head. I love the little volume wheel right here um, on the ear cup for controlling your volume. Uh, you have your built-in controls on the back of the ear cup as well on this left side for muting your microphone, the power button, as well as the uh, port for charging. And then on the V2X, you pretty much just get that same volume dial and then just a mic mute button on the back. So very simple, very, very comfortable. And the mic on the $60 V2X is incredible. Like it's one of the best out there and it's just $60 on this. So people are probably gonna complain that I'm full of BS for putting Razer at my top spot today. And there's something about Razer in general that's very polarizing to the gaming market and gaming audience. You either love them or you hate them. So they get the other side that hates them, giving them a lot of crap 24 seven. But the fact is, this new lineup is phenomenal and it deserves to be number one best of the year. Of course, in my opinion. And you can look at any other tech reviewer, look at any of the reviews out there. I've talked to a lot of my tech reviewer friends and they all said that yes, this headset is phenomenal and they're absolutely killing it this year. So it's not just me saying this. You can look out there, 
All the claims will back it up. We all share the same sentiment. Uh, Razor doing some really, really great stuff. But at the same time, like I said, any one of these three really uh, could have been worthy of that top spot because the Pro X Lightspeed, Sennheiser and Drop PC 38X and the Black Shark series, um, all so, so good. You literally cannot go wrong with either one. Now we'll do the mic tests right now. I'll save the runner ups till after this. Again, so you can hear all the mics and how they sound. We'll do them back to back to back, starting from five, ending at one. Um, and I'm also including the Black Shark V2X because like I said, they kind of shared my number one spot. So mic tests, grab some headphones. All right, check this out. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. And I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed, but she was looking kind of dumb with a finger and a thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. Well, the years start coming, they don't stop coming, fed to the rules and hit the ground running. Did it make sense not to live for fun? Your brain gets smart, but your head gets dumb. So much to do, so much to see. So what's wrong with taking the back streets? You'll never know if you don't go, and you'll never shine if you don't glow. Hey now, you're an all-star. Get your game on, go play. Hey now, you're a rock star. Get the show on, get paid. And all that glitters is gold. Only shooting stars breaks the mold. That's the truth. It's a cool place and they say it gets colder. You're bundled up now, wait till you get older. But the meteor men beg to differ, judging by the hole in the satellite picture. The ice we skate, it's getting pretty thin. The water's getting warm, so you might as well swim. My world's on fire. How about yours? That's the way I like it, and I'll never get bored. Hey now, you're an all-star. Hey now, you're a rock star. Get the show on and get paid. And all that glitters is gold. Only shooting stars break the mold. Somebody once asked, could I spare some change for gas? I need to get myself away from this place. I said, yep, what a concept. I could use a little fuel myself, and we could all use a little change, if you know what I'm saying. Well, the years start coming, and they don't stop coming, fed to the rules, and I hit the ground running. Did it make sense not to live for fun? Your brain gets smart, and your head gets dumb. So much to do, so much to see, so what's wrong with taking the back streets? You'll never know if you don't go. Go. You'll never shine if you don't glow. Hey, now, you're an all-star. Get your game on. Go play. Hey, now. You're a rock star. Get to show one and get paid. And all that glitters is gold. The only shooting stars break the mold. And that is the classic 2001 smash hit from Guy Fieri. All right, so I hope you could appreciate that mic test. But real quick, some final thoughts before we move on. Uh, on the MH630, again, for just $60, it's mind-blowing. And as you heard, the microphone on here, super, super clear. I am just so impressed with what they're doing with here for that price. And moving on to the PC 38X from Drop and Sennheiser, I think the microphone on this is probably one of the best on any gaming headset. It just sounds so natural, which is very, very hard to find. And um, this headset in general, I think, is one of the best in the entire gaming headset market. Like, this is a great, great mic and a great headset overall. And then for the two Black Shark ones, you know, as you heard with the, uh, the V2 Pro, it sounds okay. This is 180, and then for 60, the V2X, I think, has a crazy good microphone. Um, I don't know, I, they're somehow different, because you just heard the, the stark differences. Again, very clear, great mic. Again, only 60 bucks. These two, super impressive for the price overall. Now for honorable mentions. What I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna use the actual microphone for that headset and use that to explain each of the uh, headsets for the runner-ups. And spoiler, one of them in there has a mic that might be on par with the Sennheiser, I think. Okay, our first runner-up's a bit of a different one. Always kind of fun when you see these. This is a haptic gaming headset. It's the Corsair HS60. And it has this haptic-based technology in the drivers where they actually move and vibrate to certain explosions and gunshots in game. So it's a really cool sense of feeling your audio to make you more immersed. And it does a really, really good job at it. It's not too distracting, it's not overpowering. It's done just right. What I don't like about the headset overall is that it has 
this camo design to it. I really wish it was a more neutral looking headset because I would probably wear these a lot more if it wasn't looking stupid. I know when it comes to a headset, you know, looks is one of the last things you care about, but they definitely should release this in a neutral colorway, but definitely still deserves to be mentioned as it comes in at $100. It sounds good for the price, and like I said, you get that extra immersion when you're gaming with the vibrations and the feedback. Next up from Creative, we have the SXFI Gamer headset. And this one is very, very interesting. It does a few things different than a typical gaming headset, and it's got a lot going for it. So first off, as you can hear, the microphone quality is actually pretty good. I'm a little bit bassy. They say it's professional streaming grade and stuff. They call it their commander mic. I definitely think it's probably top five out of the ones that I've tested and stuff. So good on that side. It's USB-C, so it can connect to your phone, your Switch, PS4, an adapter to your Xbox, so very versatile. But it does two things in particular that's pretty interesting. First off is their built-in battle mode with the USB-C cable. And what that gaming sort of sound effect does is kind of boosts the openness of the world so it sounds wider. But what it does is it helps with positional audio and the fact where like a lot of the mids and sort of useless audio going on in the world, like ambient sounds and stuff, it kind of eliminates that and just mainly focuses on uh, things like footsteps, gunshots, explosions, again, for your awareness and stuff. It's really, really interesting how they use some sort of, I don't know if it's like AI or whatever, but whatever tech they're using to accomplish that is very, very interesting. Interesting. And then they also just have their SXFI sort of surround sound mode. It's good, uh, but it's not the main selling point here. And for $130, I think it's definitely a uh, worthy headset of being mentioned because it is just so different. Some things I don't like about it is I think the construction is kind of lacking. I'm not the biggest fan of the overall looks of it. I think it looks like it's from the early 2000s. It's trying too hard to look cool, and it's just not doing too much for me. But good sound, good mic. It just does something new, which is refreshing to see. And then the last runner up for today is going to be the Turtle Beach Stealth 700 Gen 2 wireless headset. This is the newer version, and you probably know these from Doc. These are Dr. Disrespect's main headset, which is why I wanted to check it out. And I was actually pretty impressed. I haven't really tried Turtle Beach stuff in the past, and these sound better than I thought they would, which is why I wanted to include them. They sell them in two different variants. You can get them for either the Xbox, or you can get the other one in the PlayStation version. Uh, but what's annoying, and which is why I ultimately did it make my top five, is if you want to use these with your PC, you have to buy the actual uh, separate Xbox wireless adapter to even be able to pair it in the first place. So I wish they would have either included that or some sort of you know USB dongle that pairs it automatically. Uh, so I think that's definitely a bummer. Like I said, uh, good enough to be mentioned, but not good enough to necessarily make my top five. All right guys, that'll wrap it up for my top five gaming headsets of 2020, plus a few honorable mentions. Hope you all enjoyed, but more importantly, I hope this video helped you out because while I know this list is just my personal opinion, uh, the fact is as a tech reviewer, I check out tons of gaming gear, tons of headsets, and what, these nine in total, I think were the best of the year. So if you're looking to upgrade to a new headset, hope the video helped you out. And all the links will be listed for you in the description down below, because with Black Friday, Cyber Monday, holiday deals, um, keep an eye on them. Hopefully the price will drop, save you some money. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at randomfrankp. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.